right, this is a video to uh, in Manham. Hello, Gary. I've sent a personal message to Gary, um, and I'll just summarize here what's going on. Basically, it's as if, you know, Gary has said for years ago that he has sort of an anxiety disorder, and he needs to blow off steam is my interpretation of it. And, you know, I could have... Uh, a discussion colleague that could, you know, have Tourette's, and I'm, I'm game. It might be hard to put up with, but I would try to put up with it. The problem with Gary is that 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 has dominated now every subject, and I don't think it was always this way. I and I think Gary has the capability, and I've told him so, to um, not just go with his ape mind, as he used to call it but to use his forebrain and you know he doesn't have to say I smell the dog butts and things like that at worst you you might argue that I insult Gary's ideas and, and that's fine that he takes that seriously but he can insult my ideas back we disagree you can't go into the boxing ring and then be all like why is he throwing punches at me what an asshole he smells dog butts and whatnot so we're not going to have that because that's pointless. I am going to finish with one last thing. Now the personal insults, they're not going to stop. So that's why this, uh, this is going to be the last thing. If Gary could talk where he only insulted my ideas, fine. Um, but calling me a liar, pretending he knows that I believe what I say and so on. I know he knows that. Now, some paranoid ape part anxious about the situation might go p in a paranoid fit, be like, what if he does think my physics is true, but he just won't admit it? But that's not happening, Gary. I don't secretly think that you're correct. I'm telling you the truth. Now, what I'm going to tell you uh, about what I believe. Now, what I'm going to tell you about energy needs to be taken this way. This is important. You need to understand that I know you're going to disagree with the energy formula I'm going to use. You're going to disagree that formula even matter or whatever you're going to disagree with. But I'm just telling you what my side claims. I don't care about what physics girl or what you think any of those people said. Right? This, I'm going to show you through the formula, what the formula are saying. Therefore, I don't need to go to Physics Girl or any videos on YouTube. This is what we claim. And it's verifiable or deniable. You could expose it as false because it makes predictions that you could test just with a spring and a cart. Or a spring and some balls. Alright. Now basically... You have a spring, right? Let's say it goes all the way out here when it's loose. And you have a spring that's here when it's held back. Hold it back. A little switch. Can go that way. Right? Oops. Now, this distance here, we'll call this a distance x, because the energy that gets stored, no wait, we won't call that energy k, of course, we'll call that energy in the spring, is equal to 1 half k x squared. Now, the like I'm saying, this is what current science claims. If you compress the spring, now K, K is a spring constant for that spring. All right. So that can be 1 or 10 or whatever. It's basically how many joules per whatever the unit of x is. Right? That's the amount of energy. And it's going to come out in joules because joules is the amount of energy. How strong of a slap. 
regular slap, twice as strong as a regular slap, a billion times. Now, what totally separate, what current science says about an object that's traveling at velocity v of mass m is that its energy is called kinetic energy because kinetic means moving and that is one half m v squared so that means if you buy a spring you know and it has a spring constant and you hold it back a certain distance and you push a mass Fing. you can see how much energy it's putting into the situation and no matter how big the object whether it's a big mass or a little mass it puts the same amount of energy that's what current science says so the current science says that the energy in the spring is all going to go into the energy in the ball once the spring releases its energy. The, the spring has a certain amount of energy, this amount, and when it releases it, it's going to turn into a certain amount of energy in a kinetic form. That's what current science says. So that means that I can set the energy of the kinetic equal to the energy in the spring in the end the steady state once it's all in EK form so these are going to be equal the ES of the before is going to equal the EK of after right so that means that I know that one half MV squared equals one half KX squared And this means that I can solve for the velocity. So if I could buy a spring with a certain spring constant and I compress it a certain amount, I know that's like a battery. That's a certain amount of energy to within some accuracy. Right? And I can, if I put a, a, a little ball in front of it of mass, you know, 10 grams and mass 100 grams, it'll push each of those weights and I can use this to find out how fast they'll go because I've got a velocity in there and all the other numbers I know the mass I know the K I know the X so I will be able to solve for the velocity so and that's going to be um, V squared uh, let's say MV squared if I multiply both sides by 2 then MV squared equals the 2 cancels out and that's KX squared or divide by a half. That means v squared equals, or I'm sorry, I misdrew that. Let's go back. v squared equals k over m x squared, which means v equals k over m x squared, and that equals k over m square root of k Jesus m times x and that's where this other graph comes in that's the velocity now in this uh, equation over uh, here I mean in this graph I've solved for v and I've taken k to be one and I've taken X to be one so that it's in terms of energy and mass Now, what I have in the graph here is two graphs. First of all, I have the velocity and the, and the momentum. So here's the velocity. So what you see here on this graph is
this this is mass on this line here and this is velocity so the smaller the ma and, it, and it's hit by a certain amount of energy and it goes flying how fast does it fly well the smaller the mass if the mass is um, let's see what would that be one two three four five so if the mass is 0.2 right here at this little point if you could see my mouse then the velocity is somewhere up at 3.3 .3. but if the mass is a uh, 4 then the velocity it's going to shoot off with is like 0.72 or whatever um, meters per second because of the way I've used the the units if you did these units with different units you know it could turn out to be different numbers but the proportionality between them would still follow this curve right so the velocity is really fast if the mass is small and it gets slower as the mass gets big now I also have graphed the momentum so this is how fast this is how fast the object will go the spring pushes the object and this curve shows for any given mass or any given velocity what you would ex expect so if the mass is 3 then you could go up and look at this curve and write where the mass is 3 then that's the velocity you know 0 0.87 or 0 0.82 or whatever it is you could read it off of that graph now with the momentum it's a little different so given the mass at that point and given its velocity over here what is the momentum because momentum is mass times velocity and this is it given a particular mass and you shoot it with a given energy it'll get different velocities it'll also get different momentums and though the velocities go down because of the greater mass in general when you put an energy in from a spring into that mass and get it rolling or spinning or, fly or rather sliding whatever flying through empty space in a vacuum the bigger the mass the bigger the momentum the bigger the mass the bigger the momentum if you fling a little teeny tiny thing that's a point oh 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 one kilogram off it has almost no momentum a very high velocity but almost no momentum and it'll pink off you that's why did you know that the molecules of oxygen in the atmosphere are going like at the speed of sound hundreds and hundreds of miles per hour think they have hardly no momentum now it is possible to send a bullet really really fast and put a lot of momentum in a bullet even though it has a tiny mass but that's there is no free energy what the current science says that you could disagree with Gary is that the bigger the mass given a set amount of energy and whether you're exploding the bullet to and you're sending the casing and sending the bullet going or a spring sending something sliding or rolling what current science says is that the bigger the mass for a set amount of energy the bigger the mass the more the momentum the same amount of energy this little guy that's flying this little guy that's 0.2 of a kilogram that's flying away at 3.4 meters per second it's going faster than something that's a, that's a whole kilogram but its momentum is like less than half so there is no thing where making a putting a lighter object gets more energy or the energy it doesn't change what changes according to current sciences argument is for a set amount of energy that you send a bullet or a ball or something in motion 
it says that the momentum is what will be different. And it says that the bigger the mass, the more momentum you'll manage to get into that object. It'll just be moving a slower velocity. And if you look up a place where people care about this in guns, you'll see that all everybody knows in the gun community that heavier bullets have more momentum even though they travel at a lower velocity.